Alrighty, so a bit of a different video today. As you can see, I'm not at home on the golf course. Thought I could do a long tips video here because there is grass absolutely everywhere. Um, but today we're just going to do a bit of a Q&A because I've got crap all to do at home um, in the lawn. I thought it'd be nice to get out on the golf course, show you guys some grass out here. Um, this is actually the place I was going to work um, once the old golf course closed down that I was working at, but I'm doing this lawn tips thing now. Um, my brother is the superintendent here, but anyway. Let's play some golf. Let's answer some questions that you guys have asked on Instagram and on YouTube and let's get prepped for spring. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip feed. Right, so as I said, this is a video for spring questions and any other questions that you guys ask. Um, we we'll play some golf, answer some questions along the way. But first question um, was from someone on YouTube. Let's have a look. Okay, from C Math. When is the best time to play to apply pre-emergent spring or fall? So it depends on what weeds you're going for, man. If you want to stop like summer weeds, like paspalum, crabgrass, summer grass, crabgrass, all those sort of weeds, best time to apply is if you're in Australia. Like basically August through September. You can do it before renovation, you can do it after renovation. Doesn't really matter that much, but you can do it in both seasons. Um, generally, I'd highly recommend you do spring if you can and fall to get rid of that winter grass. So fall, autumn. Hopefully that answers the question for you. Anyway, let's hit this par four. Decent size hole. 335 meters to the center of the green. Don't know how many yards that is, I'll put it on the screen. See if we can get something going. And now I'm not very good at golf, just warning you. I'm only really a beginner. I need to get lessons. I'll take that. It's not too bad. All right, so this is the second hole. As you can see, fairways are brown. Now the reason for that is because it's winter here, um, and this is South African cooch, so it's gone dormant for winter time. As you can see, there's a bit of power or winter grass in here, um, which my brother has actually recently just sprayed with half a dose of Roundup. Because the cooch is dormant, um, you can actually get away with that. Kill the stuff out of there that's still green and growing, and you won't harm your cooch. Now it's at half rate. Wouldn't recommend you do that in the middle of summer when your lawn is thriving. Cooch will come back, but you still aim not to do something like that. But yeah, um, Josh has only been working here for four months, so he's got a lot of stuff to do. But I'm excited to see how this golf course starts to look over the next little while. Um, but yeah, fairways here are predominantly South African and a bit of Kaikyu as well. So a bit of a blend, pretty old school golf course actually. Ooh, I think that. Right, so I've seen that last shot really bad. I'm gonna go with a 54 degree here just to do a bit of a chip and run sort of a thing. I'm not that great at golf, as I said. Thinning and chunking it is still in my ball game. Um, okay, Austin Lee Allison. Best way to deal with power annua. I've been pulling it out for hours in my bluegrass lawn. All right, man, so what I will be doing is the best thing to do is put down a pre-emergent, as we spoke about in the last um, question, in um, the fall or the autumn time before it germinates. So generally you want to do it probably at the start of autumn just to cover yourself. Now I'll probably go something like Barricade which is Prodiamine um, or Embargo. Um, there's a lot of products out there you can use. Um, Dithiopia um, which is Dimension. Heaps of products out there but make sure you get down a pre-emergent in the winter time. It will die out in summer so then you attack it in the winter. Now there is some post-emergence. Depends on what type of grass you've got though so I can't quite answer that question. With a post emergent anyway. Not bad. So as you can see, good bit of kike up on the approach here, just the way it rolls. Some of these old school golf courses, and then we've got that South African all the way back through the fairway as well. So Josh will work on that obviously. It's the way it rolls, but this golf course doesn't actually have automatic irrigation, so I think I'll be installing that over the next season, or next two seasons. 
So there's a lot of stuff to be done, but hey, it's all good now. Here's my little chip and run. Got too much run there. All good. Let's put this for our, this is the par part here. Dang it. So these greens here are bent grass. I'm not sure on what the cultivar is. But yeah, bent grass greens and obviously some power winter grass mixed in as well. It's almost inevitable. Um, but perfect for this climate, I'll tell you what. Especially with the winters that we have. If you had cooch grass or Bermuda on your greens here, they would just be like mud basically. So that's why you need cool season grass. You need it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Scrambling for a par there. Whoa. Yes, these tees are a little bit bare. It is winter, we've had lots of rain. People have been chewing it out with hitting divots. It's the way it rolls. There's some nicer spots up top of the tee and there's a bit of cooch grass underneath as well, which is dormant, so that's why it looks like this. So don't make a comment, you cheeky people. Um, all right, Crooked FC. New spring tip, first spring tip for new buffalo. All right, man, so if it's new, I wouldn't worry about doing a spring renovation on your buff. Biggest thing I'd be doing is putting yourself down um, either like a starter fert or just a general maintenance fertilizer for springtime. Make sure it's a slow release one as well. I'd do it first week September. If you're somewhere warmer like up in Queensland, you get down now, man. Like I consider putting um, some fert down this week, but the soil temps are still a little bit low. If your soil temps are sitting up around like 15 degrees, you can go on the um, Board of Meteorology. What is it? Board of Meteorology website? I don't know. BOM, and it tells you your soil temps for your area, or you just chuck a, chuck a thermometer in the ground. But yeah, it'd be sweet to get some fertilizer out. That is the biggest tip I'll give you, man. Keep up your regular mowing, watering. Make sure you get yourself some wetting agent for this spring as well, because it is new turf. You need to get those roots, um, you know, some adequate water. So wetting agent really is gonna help with the new, new lawn. Plus, adding something like kelp to get those roots to shoot down as well is great. But also your starter fur, it's gonna help out with establishing it if it's pretty new. Right, part three. I don't even know how long it is. What do we say? 156 meters to the middle. It's a middle pin, so I'm gonna go a easy six iron. Not gonna swing at it. Not bad, middle of the green. Not bad at all. Right, we'll answer some questions while we're heading up to the green. Um, hopefully it's not too shaky for you. All right, let me see. This one is from Isaac Chubley. Chubby. Do you need to completely kill off the old lawn when doing a full reno? Depends, man. If you've got some grass in there you want to keep, you can selectively get rid of the grass types you, you don't want, um, and the weeds and stuff as well. It really depends on what you've got there on the base. If you've got a half decent lawn, I would try to keep what you got there. If you've got something like Cooch or Kaikuyu, mate, get rid of the stuff you don't want with selective herbicides. Bow and arrow is a good one to get rid of your um, broadleaf weeds and stuff like that. Good way to start. And then once you get rid of your weeds, give it your full reno and let it fill in for the season. See how it goes. No point out killing the whole thing off the ground up if you can avoid it if there's some desirable turf species there. Now if you've got a grass top that isn't creeping, See what your most common grass type is in there. Say it's ryegrass, tall fescue. Get rid of the stuff that isn't that grass, whether it be with Roundup or Weed Killers yet again. Um, and from there, you basically wanna do your renovation and add an overseed to the process as well. Now with cool season grasses, you need to wait until autumn. Well, I recommend you do. Can do it in spring, just you're less likely to get good results because you're competing with heat and a lot more summer weeds as well. But yeah, that's the way I'd go about it. If you're doing warm season grass, um, I'll be doing it spring, so really soon. Get on top of it. I should hit it at least a little bit harder. Did hit it soft. There we go. Pitch spun back. A slight, slimy bit. A slight bit. Make sure you guys always repeat your divots too. Be a good little boy. So, alright, so it looks like a I don't know, 10 meter putt. Don't use feet here, guys. You sickos. Oh. 
Good roll. Yeah. We're on the par train today, that's three in a row. Didn't film the first hole. Um, just want to show you guys something quickly too that Josh was telling me the other week, which is my brother that works here. Um, have a look at this. Now the greens are obviously bruised a bit at the moment. Frost damage, that's the way it rolls. Um, if you see purple on your leaf of your grass this time of year, very normal, just bruising from the frost. But can you see this patch here? That is actually some poa triv there. So it's not poa annua, poa triv. Very different grass top, very, I never really had much experience with poa triv to be honest. And look at it, it just looks funky. Stands out like a sore thumb, doesn't it? Especially this time of year when they're not using much furt and it's basically just cutting the greens and possibly liquid iron up here and there, bit of kelp. Um, but yeah, you can see throughout the green, it is a mix of bent and power. Big patch of power just here, as you can see. Oh no, that's a bit of bent, I don't know. So this is the thing when it comes to looking after grass and greens, it's really hard to tell when it gets small like that. Easiest to tell when the cedar pops up. Um, but yeah, bit of power and bent mixed throughout this whole green. So. All right, so next question, next hole. We're on the fourth hole now, which is, how many meters are we? Yeah, about 400 meters Ooh, path, but it's got like a massive thing that goes up anyway. I'll stop blabbing. Um, okay, Chris Gulamu, get me? I hate pronouncing these names, man, I suck at this stuff. How can I get rid of annual rye out of Kaikiu? Tell you what, man, to be honest, best thing to do is just wait for some attempts to hit um, and it, it will die out naturally. Unlike perennial ryegrass, which will stick around, might die in summer, but can come back in the winter, so you'll be good. That's why it's called annual rye, because it only lasts not long. <laughs> Let's do another question, eh? A redan? A redan. A redan. <laughs> Recommendations for getting rid of buffalo that is creeping into my cooch lawn. So if it's green cooch, man, not blue cooch, like Queensland blue cooch or something, you can use something just like dicamba and MCPA, and it's going to get rid of that buffalo. Like, it, sometimes it takes two to three applications, just depends. This time of year, you won't see it work very well because it's so cool. This is what happens with herbicides. This time of year, they're very slow acting. Summer, they work really quick. Um, so yeah, use something like Dicamba MCPA and you'll be covered man. So you can get Camber M down at a rural centre. Um, a couple of companies sell a product called Disarray. Um, yeah, you just have to look for those actives. You can even get Bindi Killer at Bunnings. Not as strong, it hasn't got as much active in it, but it is still going to work as well. So Bindi Killer from Bunnings. All right, let's hit the shot and we'll keep going. Come back, come back, come back. A tree, hurt a tree. That was so close to being good. All right, so it looks like it's hit this tree and dropped down just over there. Not sure if you can see it. Anyway, just want to make a quick mention. You can see the power really starting to yellow off on this fairway now. So that ran up that Josh applied last week. Actually, it was last Monday. Is actually starting to take effect now and kill it off. What it tends to do is it kills it in the crowns first, right in the center, and then it kills the plant from there. Right, so not a bad little lie here. I'm gonna use a six iron, 136 meters up to the pin from here. Uphill though, so, you know, I normally use a seven, but use a six. Um, a bit of wind about it too. I don't really know how wind affects it. I'm not that good at golf. Um, but anyway, question here. When will we see more golf vlogs from Gibbs MC? Right now, boy. All right, Camcos 14. Hey, what's the best way to grow cooch grass near large trees? What's well, hard by me? Trees are hard. It stays bare dirt. What do I do? The reason, trees are so hard man is because of the tree roots and they're sucking all the nutrients and you get very compact soil around trees plus you got shade there as well and grass just won't grow in shade so to be honest it's gonna be really really hard to grow some grass in those areas there um, yeah I, I honestly wouldn't try to do it I'd put some garden beds around them if you can or try to make a feature around those areas it's just gonna be too hard too hard you could probably get something going if you stirred the soil up a little bit cut the trees back so you got some sunlight coming through but it's always gonna be a struggle Oh no, chunked it. Too much grass. Yuck, full chunk, the best kind. All right, so next question is from Bloom Gardens. He says, I'm in Ballarat, similar risk climate to orange, chiff tough or rye for a small backyard. I've got a kid and a dog and I'm using a rodent rye. If it's me, man, I would be going chiff tough if you have a dog. Just be aware that they will go dormant in winter. Um, if you've got a dog back there, it will get a little bit muddy. So this is cooch grass, chiff tough guys. 
or Bermuda is what it is. Uh, but it's going to be a lot better wear tolerant wise, especially in the summer and stuff with a dog and kids as well. And it's fine with a rodeo mower as well. You don't need a real mower to cut cooch grass or tiff tough. You don't need a real mower for like all grass types are fine with rodeo mowers if you want to do it that way. All right, set the shot with an eight iron and try and just pitch it out basically. Yeah. favorite part of golf. Not bad. Get on the green. Get up. Yes. Mm, not a bad day today. It rained earlier today, so it's a bit wet around here. Green's a bit wet, so there's heaps of rain, but it's fun. Good to get out, be on the golf course again. I miss being on the golf course every day working out on it, so it's good to get out and play some golf. Um, see how this putt goes, it's for par. No, pulled it. Oh, dang it. Right, first bogey of the day. That is not bad. I'm one over on one, two, three, four holes. That's really good for me. Um, all right, Alex says, what is the best time to start spraying at some power annual and clover closer to spring? Do it now, man, if you can. 100% do it now before you hit spring temps. Um, and we'll just start putting some vert down on buff. Answer that before, start of spring. End of August, start of spring. Cool, one more question. All right, Cameron Graffin. Yo, mate. Love it. Um, spring tips for perennial ryegrass. Bit patchy and looking to over so. If it was me, man, depends on how patchy it is, but I would honestly wait until autumn, unless it's really, really patchy and you want to get on top of it. If you can do it in spring and you're in a cooler climate like me, I always go around the October long weekend is when I do cool season grass renos. The only reason I don't recommend doing it this time of year is just because going into summer, with cool season grass, your roots aren't going to be very established um, just because you put a new lawn down, so it's really going to take a lot of water to get it through that summer time. Whereas if you do an autumn, you can establish it all the way through winter and it's going to be cheering for next summer. Getting confused there. All right, let's hit this shot before anyone comes up behind us. That was a flippin' slice. Well, not slice, it was just a, it's called a power fade. All right, so we're in the rough. Ball did not travel very far at all. Must hit one of these trees up here and come back because it was definitely falling further than that. But let's just punch it out. We'll answer question two. All right, we've got Angus Cranny. How do you get rid of, oh, how do you get, sorry, not get rid of. How do you get a Santa and a lawn to really pop and be thick and firm in the growing months? Um, what are the good things that we'll get at Lush? but still have that firm fairway feel. All right, that's a hard question, man. No, not too hard. Firm fairway one, um, we'll get to. Um, but main things, man, good fertilizer program. So put down a slow release fert every eight weeks if you can during the growing season. Put down some liquid ferts, for example, my special mix or just a good balanced liquid fertilizer every three to four weeks in between those granular ferts as well. This is what I would be doing. This is what I actually do at home. Um, make sure you keep up wetting agents once a month in the middle of summer in the thick of it every two weeks at half rate if you can and then from there you basically just want to mow 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 like mow regularly that's going to make it nice and lush like it really is going to help it thicken up and get dense especially cooch sienna anna and then from there just yeah have a proper watering schedule try one to two times a week at half an inch each time you water if you've got sandy soil you might need to up that a little bit sorry if i'm rambling a lot now if you want that firm fairway feel highly recommend that you get yourself like a groomer, a dethatcher, something like that to get the thatch out of there during the growing season. Um, and then you could also, if you don't have one of those, you could scalp it back twice during the growing season as well. Quite low just to get rid of that sponginess in your lawn. All right, well this is a bit of a dodgy shot. Um, so we're just gonna punch it out. Just, not even punch, just like chip it and roll it out. I don't even know what to call it. I'm not really good with golf terms. Just on the fairway through that big gap just there because there's nowhere to get out. You could get up through there if you were a freak, but I'm not that good. <laughs> Sweet. All right, we're in the fairway. Really hard shot though, 165 metres out from the pin. Oh, you can't even see it from here. Girls are in the corner there. So we'll hit a five iron, see how we go. But okay, another question. Mick Hayes, how deep can I bury my cooch with sand in spring? Seriously, man, you can go nuts with it. If you've got like sections that need like two inches of sand, you technically can do it and it will come through. It'll just recover a lot slower. 
Um, generally, the basic rule of thumb when I talk about covering um, grass is just try to let the leaf pop out. With Cooch and Kaiku, you can bury that stuff. So, I mean, if you have it like your um, leaf blades five mil under the soil or the sand, like it'll be fine. Just make sure you keep up the water, keep the fertilizer into it, wetting agents, and it is going to come through like crazy, man. I've seen people have big um, pile of sands like piles of sand like that big and the cooch has still popped through the top. Man, it's nuts that stuff. Let's see the shot. Should have hit a four iron, that did not get there. It was a bit chunky though. So that's probably about all the questions we're gonna have today. Thanks guys so much for tuning and watching it. I'll play through the next two holes and just leave it at the end of the video for you guys if, if you want to watch a not, nice par three coming up. So you know, I'll just film it for the fun of it. Who knows, could get a hole in one. Anyway, um, yeah, I'll be doing some more preparation for spring videos coming out soon. Heaps of stuff coming up on the channel. Um, as I said, we've got a project lawn, um, which I spoke to the guy yesterday about what we're gonna do, so get keen for that. Um, I'm gonna spray out the bent grass, probably more towards October, just so I can see how it looks with some warmer temps around, because it's improving at the moment, and I'm keen to see how much it improves with some warmer temps around as well. So we'll hold off bringing the tiff tough back, probably till October. Doesn't really come into dormancy till then anyway, so we'll be sweet, um, but yeah. Thanks guys so much for watching, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you wanna say something like this again, or a different format with Q and A's, and I'll try to get to those other questions at some point to you guys as well. Anyway, thanks so much guys. Well, if you stuck around, you can watch me play these last two holes. <laughs> what am I? One over on four holes, so this is... I'm going to have to chip this in to get a par, so maybe not. Oh, chunk it again. Stop it. Damn it. Oh, that's the disgusting part. Who likes that bounce? Triple bogey. That's real scores now. So now we're five over on five. <laughs> That's more like my real score. Not bad. Ooh. All right, so that's where we've landed and we've spun back to there, so not too bad. Not too bad, we've got a birdie putt at least. Stop rolling! <laughs> Come on. Fur pa. Right, well thanks guys so much for watching, really really do appreciate it, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Please let me know down in the comments if you want to see more vids like this. I won't do them that often, just every now and then with a bit of a Q&A and something a little bit different out of my backyard as well. But yeah, really excited for spring, like so keen. Um, loving this spring, I mean this winter weather this year though, like it's pretty warm to be honest, it's not too bad. But anyway, thanks guys so much for watching, really appreciate it and I'll see you guys next time.